Chris, WahhabiKing.com, and we are here with a new flight controller. Well, it's not a new flight controller, but it's new to us. So it's the OpenPilot CC3D. So a lot of people have been asking for it on our forum, so we decided to go ahead and talk to OpenPilot, and we've got authorization to go ahead and produce and bring you this board. A portion of each uh, cell on this particular board is donated back to that uh, open uh, source project so that the uh, developers can continue to bring us great products, uh, great software, and further develop this board. So uh, just note that this is authorized and, and uh, royalties are paid on each unit. So as far as the quality of this particular board, there's, there are some cheaper variants on the, uh, the market. Uh, but there's a huge difference in quality of the product itself. If you jump on forums and look at a lot of those $20 variants out there that you can pick up off the net, uh, they have voltage uh, fluctuation problems as well as bootloader problems. Uh, for the increase in price, since we're paying royalties on this one, I would definitely pick this one up. It comes with V4 bootloader on it, uh, as well as the, uh, the quality of the components are imported. So it's a very high quality board itself. Uh, you're going to have no problems with it uh, whatsoever. So what, uh, what is a CC3D versus a NAS or a Mini KK? Uh, you know, it's one of those uh, arguments. What's better, an iPhone or an Android? Each has their pros and cons. Uh, I will say the CC3D is easier to set up. It has a better GUI. Uh, the Nays uh, flies fantastic. Uh, they have about the same flight modes. There are a few uh, variant options on each one, uh, such as this one has cruise control, which uh, takes uh, in account the angle and it assumes uh, a loss of lift. And so when it, you're banking back and forth, it actually increases thrust when it's at an angular uh, rate. Uh, and so that uh, in theory, when you're going back and forth, it's not an altitude hold per se because it doesn't have a barometer, but it helps uh, maintain that altitude when it's at a bank where the NAS doesn't have that particular flight mode. But the NAS has uh, you know, some benefits as well. So uh, CC3D, you know, definitely pick one up. Let's go ahead and talk about the GOI. This is where the magic is on this particular uh, board. It's ease of setup. It is just unbelievably easy to set up. I've got uh, my computer set up right here and I've got the, uh, the GOI uh, opened up on this particular one. So let's go ahead and talk about it. Now when you go ahead and plug this in, it's going to ask if you want to update, go ahead and click yes, no problem. It's going to go ahead and flash the newest firmware. You're always going to want the newest firmware because they're always coming out with new, uh, newer and better options, newer flight modes, better algorithms. So definitely update to board uh, via the GUI. So when you open it up, we're going to take a look at the screen. It has this really interesting right thing right here. It's called Vehicle Setup Wizard. You just go ahead and click this, go ahead and hit next. It's going to ask you if you want to upgrade the board. Um, and what I'm going to go ahead and do is just plug it on in. Let it grab connection right down here on the bottom of the screen. And click next. So it's going to go through basically a step-by-step -step process of uh, just yes or no questions per se, you know, and just pick what, what you have. And, and it's pretty much a... Uh, uh, walkthrough tutorial on how to set up your board. What kind of input do you have? This thing supports PWM, which is your standard uh, individual connectors through your throttle, rudder, elevator, LRON, flight mode. It supports PPM or CPPM, which is a single wire. It supports Futaba's S bus if you've got a receiver that supports that, as well as a direct in satellite uh, receiver through the uh, one of the uh, auxiliary flexi ports. Flexi ports are pretty awesome. They support a lot of different things. We'll go ahead and look at that. So you just pick what you have. You, you pick if it's a, a helicopter, it works as a fly bar less controller. If you're flying a fixed wing, uh, a rover. Uh, in this case, I've got uh, multi-rotor selected. We're just gonna go ahead and click next. Uh, it asks what kind, is it a plus, is it a X, is it a uh, hexacopter? You know, you just uh, pick it one from the drop down menu and, uh, and just grab it and you just hit next. Ask you uh, what type of ESCs you have. I'm not gonna go through this whole tutorial, but Bottom line, it's just simply click what you have and answer some questions and it's extremely easy. What's really interesting on it is that the motor outputs are completely selectable. So you can just take your ESCs and plug them in. Uh, you don't have to line them up. Uh, the software is gonna do that for you when you roll through the tutorial. It's gonna ask you, here's motor one, did motor one spin? If it didn't, you can select it from a drop down and, and select the correct motor output. And it's gonna reconfigure that in the software. Same with the uh, input on the transmitter. If you got C PPM in, uh, on the transmitter, it's going to tell you, hey, flip the switch that you want to have for your, your flight mode configuration. It's going to say, oh, we know it. Uh, we found this switch. It'll tell you to move the throttle, and it learns which uh, position uh, and what uh, uh, direction all the, the controls on your transmitter are. So you really don't even know how to need to know how to set that up. It's going to walk you through that. It's an extremely easy to use GUI. I'm going to go ahead and cancel this and actually just jump to some of the flight data here. You can see, I, of course, I got the heads up display. It shows the uh, the multi-rotor and the yaw, and it shows some of the different uh, information on this particular screen. If I come back to the welcome and jump to uh, configuration, 
I was talking about the flexi ports. You can actually drop down and say this is telemetry, GPS, I2C, PPM in or CPPM in. Uh, it could be a DSM2 SAT or DSM-X uh, debug console. Lots of different options that you can uh, select for these inputs or you can use the standard input cable that comes with it uh, and just run uh, your single uh, uh, wire in from your, your receivers on there. And of course it comes with the flexi cable uh, on those as well. If we uh, click on vehicles, it has those and what's, uh, I was mentioning that you can reassign the channels. So motor one is channel one, but in this case we can easily select and say, oh, I actually had uh, ESC2 plugged into channel one. So it reassigns that, so you don't even need to change the position on these particular plugs. Same with your transmitter. Uh, we'll say, uh, say no. Yes. Uh, on the transmitter, this is where you're going to be on the screen, and it's going to say move your throttle stick, and it learns the, its position. A uh, really simple uh, setup on that particular one. Outputs, you're able to actually uh, adjust here the endpoints or the uh, the bottom of the uh, the throttle uh, settings for your ESCs. So you can actually bump it up if your ESC calibration is off. You can actually adjust it here on this particular screen. Um, as far as the PID uh, tuning, I'm going to go ahead and talk about this. Uh, the stock PID is right out uh, from the box, and this is going to work pretty well for the majority of the users, uh, same as the NAS32. But what's really interesting about this board is that you can assign your PID settings, and a lot of them. Uh, it's got a, a lot of them. Most people just deal with PIND. Uh, but if we take a look at uh, this one, it also supports three different banks. Uh, so you can select different banks while you're flying. That's a little more advanced. You don't need to worry about that. But you can change uh, all kinds of different ones where you're, you're mixing um, X and Y together uh, or you're just uh, uh, mixing X uh, or the PID or you're just uh, tuning I. All you have to do is select it here on your pr particular screen. On this one, I'll, I'll uh, go Yaw P and uh, you're able to assign that to a rotary uh, knob on your transmitter. So while you're flying, you can just crank it up and dial it in, and when you're happy with it, go ahead and land, save the settings, reassign it to a different one, and you can quickly tune uh, your multi-rotor on a single flight pack, and, and you got it dialed in using this particular uh, setup and the walkthrough uh, on the particular board. So guys, this is the Open Pilot CC3D. Uh, we've got uh, a whole range of uh, flight controllers. We hope to have care, uh, basically covered all of them out there with the uh, addition of the open pilots. So whatever is your flavor or whatever uh, flight controller is best suited for you, definitely pick it up. Uh, we should be able to have all of them available for you. And now with this particular one, we've got the entire range covered. As always, subscribe to our YouTube channel and we will see you guys next time.